The fact that 10,000 subscribers could make a million dollars a year. When I'm over here harping about social media, I'm not saying, yo, you need millions of followers. I'm like, get on social media. If you just make the right content for the right people, you are going to make a it's lot that, of money. That's why it's good for me to be on your show, because like I look like it's possible. You, good looking, <laughs> pro baseball, great hair. Like, of course, this stupid video worked for me. Yeah. When you guys are watching this video, you're like, oh, that guy is on camera. That guy does it. Literally make it possible for the rest yeah. of us. God gives you a gift for impact. You're going to become successful because of it. But the gift is supposed to go through you, not yep. to you. All right, on today's podcast, I got a guy who spent a lot of time in the military. He is a rugged-looking dude. He is tatted up. He is an ex-baseball player like myself. He is, you know, he's worked out at the same gym I was working out at. He's made mm -hmm. over $3 million in just a couple of years as a realtor, building a downline, YouTube channel. We're talking about a lot of things today. I got Will Grimes. What's up, man? What's up, bro? I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Most importantly, though, like, you're a dad. I'm a dad. How many kids? I've got three kids, 12-year-old daughter. Okay. I've got a four-year-old son, and we've got a little boy that's due actually in two weeks. And credit to you, man. Just want to give you a little shout-out for this. You actually, your team, Jonathan and your team, and everybody worked really hard to get me here sooner mm. than typical because we're due March 7th. Mm. And right around where we're due is right around where your window was for just guests on podcasts. And yeah. your team was great, man, getting me over here sooner. Yeah. Um, which That's would be awesome. awesome, but you've got Filipino kids. I got Filipino kids. Yeah, it's your like, wife uh, is full. she's ready. They're so good at it. Yeah. Right. Like she's, um, like I've got, I've got a couple guys here that are with me and are like, Hey, how's she doing? And I'm like, man, I admire her yeah. for like how, how well she breezes through pregnancy and everything with our kids. And, but it kind of pisses me off too, man. Cause it's like, she's so good at some things Yeah, and she's so casual about it. Cause I don't think she, she realizes the credit. Some of that should have, but we're ready, man. It's another boy. So this will be our, this will be our, so we have a 12 year old daughter and we've got our four year old son, yeah, Cash. The two boys. And then uh, Cam, Cam will be here soon. That's awesome. Yeah, bro. man. Super excited. So why are you sitting here, dude? T tell me about what you've done, man. Man. My, I mean, uh, a little bit, a little bit like I, um, so I played a little bit of, of baseball back in the day and, um, right as I was embarking into like having some, some farbling, uh, farming opportunity and all that good stuff. I had a buddy pass away in Iraq on his first deployment. And this kind of kicked me out of the whole baseball thing. And I also think just trying to be honest about it, right? Like I wasn't ready for the business of it. I was a little burnt out and frustrated with baseball and didn't really have a mindset of how to approach it. And I'm sure you can speak to a lot of just like, it's the most individual team sport there is on the planet, right? In, yep. in some aspects. And I'm left-handed. I throw the ball hard. I had some good. I had some good talent there, and so going through, you know, being a part of like a, a little league steamboat series, World Series uh, team, um, high school, getting into like JUCO stuff. Like I threw the ball hard. I was left-handed, so I played well. When it was time to practice, I practiced, and I, I practiced hard because my coach would kill us if we didn't practice hard. But I wasn't necessarily neurotic or intense or you know i guess i guess coin the phrase would be like i wasn't very kobe bryant yeah about it right yeah, and you weren't like fully passionate about it no and I, I think when you're younger like it's really hard to adopt that mentality unless people are really birthing that into you right, right. and baseball was fun i had a lot of uh, a great times with it didn't get crazy about it but when my buddy passed away i'm in this place of just not even liking baseball at this point so i think subconsciously i I was giving myself an out versus really pushing forward and leaning into baseball and, and navigating through that storm. But I didn't really have a skill set or nobody really gave me a skill set on how to lean in and navigate through that storm. And that's what the Marine Corps gifted me. And, you know, so when my buddy passes away on his first deployment, I remember him talking about being a part of the big gun club. I remember him talking about his big brother uh, being in the Marine Corps. I remember him just being so proud to be a part of something bigger than himself, you know, mm -hmm. and like, I never really had that. And baseball wasn't serving that for me. I'm not saying that it should have served me for that, but it just wasn't serving for me. And I go home, I reset. I'm, I'm talking to my, to my old man about it. My old, my old man was a um, Vietnam era veteran from the Marine Corps and asking questions. And he's like, hey, are you going to the military? Because you're asking me a lot of <laughs> shit. You know, are you going to the military? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about it. He's like, well, go look at everybody. You know, go look at Air Force and, and everybody and – so I did that, and I just wasn't impressed, not because they're not impressive in their own right, just the recruiters that I met along the way based off of what I was really looking for. And I think I was looking for, you know, like 
a male role model, something to look up to, something like I was I was ambitious and looking for something, but had no idea what I was looking for, but knew I was in the pursuit of looking for something. And, you know, I, I went ahead and did uh, my my written test with the Marine Corps and they were in good shape. They emulated something I could look up to. And so I decided to go to the Marine Corps, man. And, you know, this is where I learned hard work. This is where I learned fear. Um yeah, I didn't know how to swim until boot camp. <laughs> and I I don't have a fun story about this, man. I don't have like a, hey, when I was a kid, I was camping and I almost drowned in a river and someone had to save me. Like, no, man, my my punk ass big sister threw me in my grandma's pool as a kid <laughs> and I almost drowned in a six foot pool. And, my, and the same sister had to jump in and save me, mm. right? Because I was freaking out. And I just, when you, and you know, when you play baseball, it's all summer. When you're playing tournaments, you're not going to the pool with your friends like you're going to sleep. Yeah. So I was able to skate away from swimming with friends growing up. So I never had to deal with the embarrassment of not knowing how to swim. And I'd also never shot a rifle until boot camp. Mm. But my dad was a distinguished shooter. <clears throat> my grandpa was a silver star, bronze star recipient, World War II. Just, I just started buying guns for the first time. We're going to have a good time. Yeah. But it. it's it's like, I'm, and I, I had never shot a rifle until boot camp because, man, my mom was a hippie. Right. Like this is how hippie my mom was, man. I'm in fifth grade. This is right when you start liking girls and guys are guys and girls are cute. Right. And Denver, we get weather there. Right. So it's indoor recess. We uh -huh. got snow there. And we watched the Lion King for indoor recess. Right. And my mom comes in the next day in school to my teacher and lets my teacher have it because the Lion King shows premeditated murder. <laughs> right the uncle yeah, yeah. kills Just, dad and like yeah. super embarrassed so, so you know my mom bless her heart um but that's just kind of like the world that i grew up in man and like i had for the first time i wasn't good at something i didn't know if i was going to be good at something and my my history was man i, I had been throwing a baseball hard my entire life so yeah. i'd never really done something that was like really challenging really fearful really hard and you know so like i'm just signing to go to the marine corps man i go to <laughs> i go to boom camp and i've got to go through that now yeah. yeah. How many years did you end up spinning there? Uh, eight years. I did eight years in the Marine Corps. Um, I learned how to swim. Yeah. Um, learned how to shoot a gun. I learned, I, you know, and like, but man, it's such a testament, right? Because when we talk about real estate, when we talk about being proficient in the business stuff, we're going to talk about the bedrock of, of what we've developed has come off of like not knowing how to swim. So for example, when you don't know how to swim in the Marine Corps, you have to tell them that because you're jumping off this 15 foot platform into the deep end. I'm surprised they just let people join. Oh, dude. Oh, they cannot wait to you up <laughs> yeah, they cannot wait yeah. so you're on this 15 foot platform right you're already in boot camp and as long as you get to swim call four before boot camp's over then then you're good right which is like i think they i think they realize we were fighting a war in the desert and they're like this guy <laughs> this guy yeah you swim call swim. four no problem yeah. but i remember you have to raise your hand and like tell everybody like you don't know how so when you jump in they'll watch you and they're like hey when you jump jump in you got to try to tread water for a couple minutes like three minutes uh-huh so i jump in man and i don't try to tread water at all I just doggy paddle to the other side of the pool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm scared. And, um, I remember one of my drill instructors, excuse my language, but he was like, Grimes, you mother. <laughs> and I swear, dude, he walked on water. He goes all the way across the pool, man, with these other drill instructors and they're slamming me in the water. And the more I panic, the harder they are on me. Uh, as I calm down, they calm down. But here's, here's what was interesting. I, I had to start from step one of just learning how to flutter kick and breathe on the side of the pool, not even in the water, right? And I learned how much effort you can actually give something mm -hmm. to just get a just get a little bit of progress. So for two weeks, man, it's all day, every day, these little details, and it barely got me to swim qual four. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I had really understood how much you can work at something, but then it only expects very minimal back, right? And that was super super interesting for me to learn that because I man, I just never had a perspective on something I wasn't talented in. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is like when you look at natural talent versus like maximizing what you have. Right. I mean, I can tell you're a big, well, not a big, like you're a stocky dude, right? right. You're not like Michael Phelps, who's tall and lanky and like, yeah, he's going to be only six, four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm only, I'm only six four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, he, he, you know, it's like he's naturally gifted for that, right? Just yeah. like these NBA guys. Like, you, you got it or you don't, right? Correct. And so for you, it's like, well, yeah, you're, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to be a naturally gifted swimmer. No, but here's what was really cool. You, we did swim qual before we went to the rifle range in boot camp. So now I've adopted this really hard work ethic and not even expecting anything, but just really giving it my all because, man, at the end of the day, I want to be a Marine. 
Yeah. Right. Like my, my lineage came from that. I had a lot of pride. I had a lot of desire to just go and do something I wasn't great at, but I want, man, I just, I want to be great at it. So I'm a, I'm really adopting this hard work at the pool, hating it every day to get an inch back that same momentum of working that hard at something. Cause I'd never worked that hard at baseball, but I was talented. Here's where the shooting got interesting. I did have a talent for shooting. Mm. I'd never shot before, so I didn't know it, but I'm coming from, we did swim qual and all that stuff in boot camp first. Now we're going up to Camp Pendleton for the rifle range, but my mentality is hardworking now. Mm. So now as I'm going to the rifle range, I've never done it before, so I don't know if I'm going to be good or not. All I know is this new work ethic that I've got. And when you combine that level of work ethic to something that you are talented at, this is where things really get interesting, right? And this is where... I got neurotic about it. I got obsessive about it. I really leaned into it. I ended up being a high shooter at a boot camp. I was high shooter on any, any range I'd ever gone to. And I, I understand that's mildly interesting. It's not to throw out there as a bragging point, but it is a testament of I learned two very important pieces while going through boot camp. Hard work and the expectation of just minimal result and not trying to pay attention to instant gratification or an instant result right away to solidify the hard work or not. Mm -hmm. Just f working for the work. And then I married that with something that I ended up being talented at. And when you put both of those together, man, like it, it got really interesting and it made me become extremely successful through my military career. And it's the same thing that I've done with entrepreneurship is adopting that hard work, but also paying attention and leaning into my strengths Yeah, and making sure that I'm combining the both as I'm working forward. Right. So it's not just being lazy and leaning on a talent. It's also not just blindly working hard at stuff that you suck at. It's yeah. It's really navigating both of those, man. It's, it's interesting how much that applies to the entrepreneurial world. 100%. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, you, you spent eight years in the military, which you learned all these skills, you learned work ethic, you learned discipline, you learned what it was like to struggle, um, and they prepare you for the entrepreneurship world. I always talk about my baseball career, which was ironically also eight years, and, you know, all the things I learned during that time of struggle injuries, just dealing with all this crap. I mean, it's not anything like military, but you know, when you go through these things that are outside of whatever your career path is, they give you a totally different perspective of, you know, what you're doing, right? Because right. I think guys who just, they, they go to college, they graduate, they go into corporate America, they, they have no life experience. They've just done the same thing. Whereas you're like, bro, I was in freaking Afghanistan doing this thing. And I've seen some stuff and you know, when I see a problem in business, I don't trip because it ain't nothing. What, and what, what, and the reason why man, like I talk about insecurities a lot, the reason why I talk about like a lot of the training is first and foremost, man, there's guys that have way more experience than I do. My career is mildly interesting when it comes to stuff like that, but where it's all rooted from is mindset, training, development of skill sets. You know, when, when guys deploy, that's their, you know, that's the opportunity to then be, per, you know, I guess proven at, that mindset and skill set and proficiency and everything. But everything prior to that is what was so intriguing for me. Like when you come to the entrepreneur world, like, look, man, no one's dying. You know, so when we talk about leadership and, you know, like, hey, what was it like in the military? I was a fast Marine. I, I come from a fleet anti-terrorism security team. They were attached to, to SOCOM back then. And we did some really cool training. We had some really great leaders that were around us. But, you know, the number one thing I do talk about with entrepreneurship is leadership and influence in the entrepreneur space, it's a lot more difficult than you might think, right? And it's, it is because of the fact that nobody's dying, right? And like, if you use the Marine Corps as an example, when guys are getting ready to deploy, our leadership used to talk a lot about this and they would talk about the benefit of training scared, mm -hmm. right? And when guys are getting ready for a workup and let's say they're 90 days out prior to their, to their deployment, you're doing this all out workup <clears throat> and you're I mean, you're pretty much going to 29 Palms and you're, you're playing war for the next 90 days until, you know, until you're scheduled for your deployment. And when guys know it's inevitable now that they're going, they're asking every question. If they don't know something, they're saying that they don't know it. They're seeking more guidance. So leadership at that point has a lot of momentum on their side because of how eager the subordinate is, right? How eager the recipient is mm -hmm. and how much they embrace more knowledge, more leadership, more time behind the guns because it's now inevitable. A lot of times, like in our real estate space, right? Yeah. Like until the market crashes, you know, like we, like for example, these past couple of years in traditional real estate, right? Like I'm looking over here because I've got some buddies with me that are in that game as well. It's like, yeah. dude, realtors have been fat and happy, man. They've been killing it. Abundance, right? But like all of a sudden, now we're you get in like a time a of bit. war per se, right? And like yeah. now that they're, now 
like where we've had a lot of success and a lot of just passion and fun behind, you know, what we do with leadership is because for the first time in this industry, realtors are training scared. Yeah. They understand like they're, they're not going to get by like they've gotten by these past couple of years. They understand it's going to be harder and Hey, now it's either be resourceful, seek leadership, seek knowledge, go apply everything that you're learning yeah. in order to make this work or get out. Yeah. And for true leadership, they understand the momentum behind that. Right. But until now, man, trying to lead or whatever it may be when everyone's fat and happy, like it just leading and training to complacency because there isn't this, this thing, this fear for them, man, it's hard. But now as far as like the timing and where the timing's at, it becomes very opportunity. Like uh, it's just a huge opportunity for people to either step up and get in this game and, and separate themselves from competition and really be transcendent as a professional. And for leaders, it gives us an opportunity to really see like, Hey, do our, our systems and processes and tactics and proof of concept, do they really work? And can we really rally everybody around us to, to be proficient and change their life and make sure that they're successful? Yeah. Outside of like this window right now, like it's uh man, there's just, there's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors of what quote unquote makes people successful. Hey, if you're looking to grow your real estate investing business, whether you're just getting started trying to get your first deal or you're trying to scale and get to the next level, you need to join us at Wealthy Investor. We've got events every single quarter that are absolutely crazy. We've got online coaching programs where we have Zoom calls, a community every single week. We give you everything you need to know to start your business, scripts, processes, SOPs, all of it. It's for you so that you can dominate. So if you wanna learn more about how to join our community and be mentored by me and some of our top coaches and be around other students who are absolutely crushing it, Go to WealthyInvestor.com, apply for a free call with my team. Once again, WealthyInvestor.com, apply for a call today. Mm, yeah, 100%, man. I can tell you like the last, uh, you know, whatever, two and a half years before the slowdown um, for six months that we've had was just great. I mean, not only for me, but for, you know, everyone else in the real estate industry. If you were flipping houses, you were, you know, getting deals that doubled your profit because prices were going up so fast. If you're a realtor... Everybody wants to buy a home. Rates are low. Yeah. You know, if you're a lender, everyone wants to refi. You're going to have record years. And then, you know, you see like, oh, crap. Like that kind of wasn't uh, normal. I got to go run a business the right way. I, I can't yeah. just rely on the market. I can't rely on people just saying, oh, my property went up again. Rates are low. I can refi. Like you got to actually go prospect and yeah. find some people. Well, like that video that, or like that video you posted the other day about losing a ton of money on a lot of those flips that you had. Yeah. And you end up losing half a million dollars. Yeah. Like to, to stomach that. Yeah. That's where like entrepreneurship gets really interesting, but to stomach that, you know, but like it's fun where we're at is fun. We've, we've, man, we've got over a hundred realtors that have decided to join us in the past 12 months. Yep. Something that's unique. So I, I guess I'll just say it now. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. we are launching our YouTube course for realtors on your show. Like no one knows that it's available. It's yep. inside of my link tree on Instagram just sitting there. We haven't marketed it. We haven't done anything with it. And if you're watching the show and you go to that, it's half off right now. And That's it's awesome. only being promoted. So like, I know when your show comes out, we're just going to let the show run. We're going to have these clips. And the only way, only space it's going to be in is just on my link tree. Yeah. Instead of Instagram for everybody that's dedicated to you, that's listening to you, that, that wants to, to go in and better themselves. But it's an opportunity. We're doing it half off. First and foremost is to create our brand and to create our proof of concept of, hey guys, we have a YouTube channel that cost us zero money to produce. That's made us over $3 million in the past two and a half years. It's the course. There's a lot of courses out there right now, man, right? Yep. Waiting three years until you produce one means, man, we know anything and everything about how to do it. Our systems and processes behind the scenes of being practitioners on navigating people through their process of buying a home, not just yeah. being the marketers, but being the realtors behind that, that actually get the deal done. This is the course to do it with, right? And like the timing is unique because of where everyone is at. And I'm motivated with this because people that are putting their money where their mouth is, yep. people that are committed to being better and they're going to do the work in order to become better. They're going to be great in this market yep. versus everyone else that's kind of tapping out and due to life circumstances or lack of whatever it may be, they're having to get jobs. Yeah. Well, I think what's interesting with you, um, and I don't know if you touched on it. I mean, we've talked about, you know, you've made, you know, close to 3 million bucks the last few years. And um, that's mainly as just an agent and, and commissions and everything else. And um, I know you're building your downline and, and, you know, you've got the course coming out now and everything else. 
But what stuck out to me when we were talking pre-show was you, you know, you told me, you're like, yeah, you know, our YouTube channel has produced basically all of our commissions. And I was like, dude, I keep telling these realtors that all the time, you know, you're wasting your time holding open houses, like door knocking ain't it. You should just get behind the camera and go reach way more people than uh, all the manual ways that they'll tell you. Right. And, you know, the, the problem is, too, like, I, I'm an advocate of cold calling. We cold call in many of our businesses. But, like, yo, if you're cold calling, uh, nobody knows you. You're not building a brand. You're not building <laughs> presence. And so, you know, when you're looking at th – this is how I do it, okay? When I'm looking at customer acquisition methods – um, there are things you can do that only make you money one time, right? So a cold call is only going to make you money that one time you, you interact with that seller or whatever, right? You might get a referral, but let's just say it's a one-time event. Um, you're not doing anything to build your long-term brand by cold calling. You're just cold calling in the, into the ether and, uh, whatever happens, happens. You know, the same thing is true with other forms of marketing as well. But when you do things like social media, you end up not only still getting people for one-time deals, but you're also building a long-term brand with it. And so for me, um, I focused always my efforts on things that can make me money today and get customers today, but also build me for the long haul. So social media, podcast, it was also why we started running TV commercials um, here in Las Vegas. We've run TV commercials now for three years and you know, I've spent millions of dollars on commercials but guess what people know my commercial here in las vegas right like right. it's built a brand awareness and it gets customers when it runs it and i think it's layers right like this channel we've got our, our youtube channel you know it's got ten thousand subscribers but it's made that much money and just it goes to show guys we don't pay for advertisement on it. it's all organic to what people are searching what they need in colorado and it's a mile deep in a lane of living in denver colorado right yep. like but What's really cool about that, man, is like that got us on the Drew Barrymore show. Oh, really? We were on the Drew Barrymore show because she was moving her show back to her hometown. And she's like, oh, well, what other cool hometowns are out there? I wonder if like we could go find some more. Well, what do her executives do or her PR people do? They YouTube. Shit. And then when, as they're YouTubing Google or uh, Denver, what do they find? They're like, oh, look at these knuckleheads. Like these guys should be on the show. And hey, that creates brand. Right. And in addition to that, when you talk about, you know, like long form long-term like residual brand and business you know, like one of the things that we'll teach in our course and i don't want to get too specific on the podcast but that we'll teach in the courses we've got a private network for everybody that's ever purchased from our youtube so mm -hmm. all these new people that are moving to colorado right when they move to let's call it parker colorado right like there's an introduction and there's a story that goes into a private network. And it's instead of me showing my closing photo on my Instagram so everyone can see that I have a closing every day and look at me, look at me, look at me. It's not about me, right? It's about service. It's about others. So we tell their story and we introduce those folks inside of a private network where all of our other YouTube purchasers have been. So if it's, you know, hey, uh, Justin and, and Tim, Justin and Kelly, hey, they just moved to Parker, Colorado. They've got a couple of kids. Everyone is safe and okay with it because it's a private network. You can't be in there unless you've purchased from us. But yep. what's really cool is you'll get other moms and dads that chime in and they go, hey, we just moved to Parker three months ago. Congratulations. We should grab coffee. By yep. the way, we go over here on Sundays and they've got an amazing little soccer league for kids. I noticed that you have kids and we're gifting them community. Yeah, I, I, I've right? never heard of a realtor doing that. We... um. We've done that with our investors at Pineda Capital. So, mm -hmm. you know, like we've got all these investors who have um, bought apartments with us and other things. And what I like to do is I'm like, hey, guys, you know, you're in you're our investors. I want to invite you to WealthCon, our next event, you know, get together. Um, you know, we want to do something nice for you guys for investing with us. And so, like, they can experience the community and be a part of, you know, this network of being around other high level people. Well, think about this. You know how people want to do a client appreciation, yep. right? How many emails got to go out? How many muffins got to go out? How many door knocks just to remind people, you know, have to go out in order to like coordinate that and make that go well, correct? Versus if everyone's in a private community, a private network, it takes me about five minutes to create a post in there. Yeah. Let them know the weekends that are available and when we want to do it and people can vote for which weekend works best and cool man at Washington Park we're going to throw a, a, a client appreciation day and we're gonna have some bouncy houses for kids and food and which work in, which weekend works best and because that community is so tight 
because it's private, because everything that we're posting in there has nothing to do with sales, everything to do with community, people go in there and they look at the post. Yeah. And then they vote which weekend works best. Is it just like a Facebook group you're putting them in? Yeah, there's a couple yeah. of dynamic things that we do with it, but it takes me five minutes and then we coordinate that versus like how hard is it for most folks through their CRM or an email. And it's not that those things don't matter. We do those things as well. But how easy is it for me to just go in there and communicate to my network of people yeah. in five minutes versus your traditional way? No, I think that's a great tip. Um, one thing I want to point out too is that the interesting part is, you know, you're talking about how your YouTube channel has 10,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. which is not a lot of subscribers to, you know, people who would say, oh, well, that's not that big. Like, but you know, to get to 10,000 is not easy. Right. But the, the more unique thing about that is the fact that 10,000 subscribers could make a million dollars a year. And I think yeah. that's the thing people need to realize when I'm over here harping about social media, I'm not saying, yo, you need millions of followers. I'm mm -hmm. like, Hey, get on social media. If you just make the right content for the right people, you are going to make a it's lot that, of money. It's the right content for the right people, right? Like we didn't create a real estate YouTube channel for the entire country, yep. right? Like if you guys go to livingindenver.tv right now, yes, we bought that domain by the way. So if you guys are like curious about why we did that, well, it's because anybody can name their channel something. So yeah. if you want to like market well, you don't want to be telling somebody like, hey, Ryan, yeah. check out my channel. If you go to Living in Denver yep. and then scroll down, we should be at the top. But if we're not, scroll down, you'll see my stupid face. You'll find it versus if I can just tell, yep. hey, Ryan, go to livingindenver.tv, man, have a great time. Like you, it'll take you right to our page. But what I'm getting at is the niche, man. It's, it's a mile deep on everybody that's considering or looking for information that's moving to Denver, right? Like you don't have to cast such a wide net in order to create a ton of sales. Matter of fact, like I was talking about this with um, with my coach that, that's here today. We're talking about like working smarter, not harder, right? Yep. And there's some theory on that. Then there's theory on, well, work smarter and harder. It's like, thanks, jackass. Like, <laughs> right? But I feel like, man, like you can't work smarter before you work harder. Yeah. You have to build a foundation and you got to go a mile deep in something, almost like your thesis, right? Your proof of concept. And then once you've solidified that foundation, this is where you can take that same concept and now work smarter by yeah. pivoting into other aspects of business where that can be successful. But it took a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency, and a lot of just hyper focus on being the subject matter experts on that and putting the hard work on that. But then now, as far as like our content, everything else that we're doing, we're being a little bit more smart with the courses that we're putting out. We do elite small group training. So if you guys are out there and you're looking for training, we also do group training where it's a small group space off of your proficiency levels and where you're at. And yes, it's going to cost you money. So pucker your asshole and <laughs> pay to pay attention and be ready to get committed to actually learn how to change your life and your future through through your mindset and through business, but that's where we're getting smarter, but it took yeah. the hard work first, right? Like I know you can, you've probably seen the shortcuts in investments or the people that were looking for that. You've seen it in real estate. And it's like, man, there are some smart things you can do in business, yeah. but it's not before you've put the hard work in to just know what the f those would be in the first place. Right? Yeah. No, hundred percent. I, I think that, you know, in regards to social media, what you guys have done, um, people, especially realtors and local businesses can easily emulate because like with yours, you're, you're only targeting Denver and you're creating con. I was just on the channel looking at it right now as we were talking, like you're, you're targeting Denver people. You're talking about, Hey, here's some things to know about relocating. Here's some things about neighborhoods and like you're being the go-to source of all things, Denver real estate. Correct. And you know, on one hand, right. You, you know that your your channel will never be like a massive channel being only Denver. And that's fine because you don't want to be the nationwide channel, mm -hmm. right? You want to have clients in Denver who want to buy or sell their home. And so it's very specific. Um, I have seen this also done with um, a couple of our students, like they're doing it in Texas and like their, their YouTube channel, they have like 20,000 is only this city in Texas. Right. And um, it, it, and they're making, lots of money, just like you're doing right with in quote unquote, smaller YouTube channel. And then I've got YouTube guys who have millions of subscribers and they make no money. Yep. Right. And so you're like, okay, well, wh what, what's the plan here? What's the goal? And so for me as a, a business guy and as a influencer, the, the number one thing I always teach people is you number one need to know your avatar. All right. What is this person that you are trying to um, bring into your world, like 
Number one, do you have something to even sell them for what they're looking for? Number two, what kind of content? What are the problems that they're figuring out? Like what, what, what do they need to figure out, right? If you know their problems, you can make YouTube videos about solving those problems. What are the 100%. best places to eat in Denver? Okay, boom, I'll make it. What's the best you know, construction guy in Denver? Let me interview this guy on my channel, and then boom. Yeah. Now people are getting answers. And by the way, if you need to buy... I got it's you. It's that. It's your call to action, right? Like on our videos, man. Like, hey, as much as we love making these videos, we would love more to help you with your real estate needs. That number that's popping up below. We are the guys who answer the phone calls, text messages, and those emails. So if we can help you, we'd love to. That being said, we're going to talk about the five things you might not know about Cherry Creek and just letting people know we're licensed brokers and that we're willing to help. It's not taboo. It's not unappreciated by people because you're giving free content, you know, that they want to learn. But it's, man, it's it's a mile deep. We don't want to be. We don't want to be across the entire country. We'd rather teach agents yep. how to be the subject matter experts and do that for themselves versus us just trying to be abroad. But it's the conversion when you talk about, you know, people that have millions of of subscribers but they've got no money that's coming in. It's like, have have you even documented how you've become successful with creating a lot of followership or subscribers? And could that be a product for you? Could that be coaching for you? Like you've got to figure out your system and your process and what got you to where you are. And there's got to be that that conversion, right? And I think that's where people get really good in the entrepreneur space and they understand the sales. This is why, like, a lot of your sales guys, Grant Cardone's the world. Amazing entrepreneur, right? Yeah. I think so. If people argue that, no problem. But for this for this podcast, I think he's a great entrepreneur. Yeah. But he's also, he's also in sales. He understands yeah. the product. He understands value and intellectual property. And he knows how to convert something from attention to sale. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I've seen... Um a lot of these realtors do YouTube channels in different ways, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, for all the realtors listening, and this even applies to real estate investors and all businesses, but like um, with these realtors, right? Um, one of my friends, his name is Chockets. He's um, a YouTube- That's a cool name. Yeah, his name's, well, I always, I call him his wrong name. His name is not <laughs> Chockets. That's how it looks. It looks badass. Phone it sounds phonetically, badass. Phonetically, it's Chuckets. Got it. And then sometimes he tells me it's chocolates and then I'm like, bro, like, I don't even know which one it is now. But anyways, so, you know, he's got like over 200,000 subscribers on YouTube and his thing was he just would tour new homes in Las Vegas mm. and that was it. He went to every new home community and toured every single model and like he made a YouTube video about it. And basically anybody who wanted to buy a new home, they were calling him in Las Vegas because he had a tour of every single new home. And it's like his videos at the time when he was first doing them, it was just literally him and a gimbal. He didn't have any special yeah, production. He just They don't want special production. This is what people don't understand about yeah. the YouTube community. If we're showing neighborhoods in Cherry Creek or we're showing new builds, whatever it may be, they want to feel like it's quality content, like they can see it clearly. Yeah, it's not bad. But they don't want a movie trailer. Like they want to feel like if I'm walking through, you know, Cherry Creek North. They want to feel like they're walking with me to get a good depiction of what it would look like, you know, to walk and to be there. If it's overly edited and different things, like it takes away yeah. the authentic side of like what they're like what they're trying to get a feel for while they're watching your videos. Hundred percent. Yeah. And I mean, he's been on YouTube now, I don't know, maybe like five years. Wow. And it's funny, the way that I found him was my wife used to watch his channel. Yeah, man. Because she, <laughs> you know, she's always looking at new homes and stuff. And she'd be like, what? Look at this new home. And because um, we, you know, at the time we were living in like a 1980s home, right, right? That we had flipped. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like, just I wasn't on YouTube at the time. And it's funny, like we're now friends and like he still does it. He's making over a million bucks a year just purely on YouTube touring houses, right? Then I see you know, other realtors do similar things where like you're going into the route of like, I'm sure you do home tours too, but you're like doing a lot of educational content as well for buyers and sellers and things. Um, then you have other realtors like my friend, Ricky Carruth, who's been on the show where he's like trying to help the realtors themselves. Like mm. that's his audience. He's mm -hmm. like, Hey, let me teach you how to become a better realtor, right? He's not necessarily going for buyers or sellers in his market. He will get buyers and sellers, but like, that's not the core focus. Right. Um, and then you have guys like Ryan Serhant, you know, when I was in interviewing him, he said the same thing. He was like, you know, we, we've done like the super highly produced stuff and we're finding the more raw stuff works better and he'll do tours. He'll do vlogs. He'll do, you know, he does a whole sort of content and he's been on TV and, and all these things. So, you know, the point I'm making with all this is 
I've interviewed basically a lot of successful seven figure, eight figure realtors and they all use content and they all use it in a very different way. Right. And whether they have millions like Sarah Hant or 10,000 on a YouTube and you've got a big Instagram, you know, you've got almost 200,000 on Instagram. Yep. So it's not like, uh, you have no following like shout out to Annie Frisella. Yeah. But man, like we're on a podcast right now. Right. That leads me to like just another thought, another point. People ask me like, Hey man, how'd you build your Instagram? I'm like, man, I'm not your guy for that. I have a decent following and I gained like 60,000 followers after being on Annie Frisella's podcast, the culture that that guy's built at first form, man. Yeah. And what they're doing over there. People were sending me food. People were mailing me shirts. I didn't even know how they got my home address, dude. Yeah. But so many people, like if Andy vouches for you, like his culture is so cool. So I got a ton of following from that. But so no, I'm not like an Instagram guru, but what I am is the work, the hard work. Like we built our podcast a couple of years ago, man. And it was also like when we built our YouTube channel, it was right at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. When we were starting our podcast, it was right just before COVID. And it was honestly looking at the pivot of how do we get more remote and still in front of people yep. and bring value, even though we can't necessarily be in person. It was looking for the pivot, not looking for the out, not looking for the complaint, not looking to sit down. Yep. It was looking at the pivot of how we can still accomplish what we're trying to. And it actually launched us and transcended us even further than we could imagine. But uh, our podcast, Day One Dollar Zero, was a part of that, right? Yeah. And having Andy on and Andy just going, hey, you guys are good motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, I just, and like credit to him, man. Like I wasn't a big deal back then. Like military career turned entrepreneur and he just, he could tell we were fans because we had great questions for him when he was on our podcast. And yep. he's like, I want to have you guys on. And like, I love that guy for that because he didn't yeah. owe us that. And we're, we're not necessarily a big deal, but he's showing what's possible by just not only telling his story, but showing other guys on their way up how doable it is. And when you talk about this content on, on YouTube, Right. And you're talking about how even a lot of like high end guys are going more to this authentic raw feel because of what people are looking for. Like what that's really telling everybody out there right now is, hey, there is a way to do it. There is a how to do it. There are some skill sets. There is some teaching and you got to be around the right people to learn a lot of that stuff. But the culminating piece here is that it's doable. Yeah. Stop making it so impossible for yourself. Right. And man, like something that rings true to this day is people don't change until it's too painful not to. Mm. our market right now where things are at how difficult it's becoming it's like hey what's your threshold of pain mm -hmm. are you finally you know like that whole cliche statement right like are you sick and tired of being sick and tired and are you going to get out or are you finally going to have enough pain now to where you'll do whatever it takes to win and yeah. if you are then you're going to realize that there's work involved but it's so much more doable than people think man 100 percent, yeah and i'll tell you you know, you're talking about COVID presented you an opportunity that you basically were forced into, right? Mm -hmm. Because people can't show homes, people aren't whatever they're doing, right? And you're like, man, how do I get in front of people? Well, let me well, go. We were essential, right? Remember, real estate was still essential, at least yeah. in the state of Colorado it was. But even though we were essential, people didn't want to be around people. So it yeah. didn't matter that it was still okay in real estate to show stuff if, if or or to do first time home buyer classes yeah, yeah. At, at wherever. If yep. people, regardless of law or regardless of rule per se, people were super cautious back then, no matter what, man. 100%. I mean, that was the same time I got into social media because I saw the same thing. I'm like, you know, we're flipping all these homes and, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the market, right? I might get left holding a big bag right here if things don't turn. I was like, I better start like looking at plan B's and what I'm about to do here. Like, how am I going to take advantage of you know, what the world is today. And so I was like, well, I think everyone's going to be on their phone. I think everyone's going to be watching TV. Pivot. Like I might as well just start making content. So you go watch my first videos, you know, it was during lockdown. I'm just at my kitchen table filming videos. Still good hair. Still good looking <laughs> though. That's why it's good for me to be on your show. Cause like, I look like it's possible. You good looking <laughs> pro baseball, great hair. Like this guy man <laughs> of course his stupid video worked he's this like for me yeah. when you guys are watching this video you're like oh that guy is on camera that guy does it we're good <laughs> i can do it. like i literally make it possible for the rest y of us you right? know what but here's what i tell people i'm like look it does not matter how you look or your skill set or anything Agreed. else right if my boy Will here can do it, anyone can do it, right? No, <laughs> Look, if you make a lot of money yeah. on that pitch, like, I need to be an affiliate for that pitch. Yeah. yeah. But I tell people, like, before, you know, the wills of the world sit here, I'm like, look, half these guys who are on content, they ain't even good looking. They're not even average, right? Like, they're, most people who, like, decided to become YouTubers, they were kind of weird people Dude, in life to begin with. You know the one thing you can see on camera, though? What? And I think it's just human intuition. You can literally see it. Intent. 
intent. So when we talk about whether someone's physically attractive or not, like we've got folks that have partnered with us that are that are making a half million dollars a year on their channel. And it was their first year of having a channel. Yeah. And they're not Brad Pitt or, yeah. or Tom Brady or whatever. But like, man, when people are in our industry or in their industry, even if you're not in real estate, if you really are in a service based industry, right? And you really do care about helping people people through your level of professionalism and commitment, people can feel that through your videos. Man. They can tell where your priorities are. Even if you're giving your call to action, of course you got to have one of those. They got to know what you're in it for. Yeah. But people can literally feel or see your intent straight through that camera, man. And the, the guys, no matter how good looking you are, if like they feel like it's inauthentic, it's a hard sell. Yeah. It won't well, work. And even I've told people this too. I don't want anyone to feel bad for me because I, I'm cool. I love my life. But like, you're going to always be judged one way or the other, right? Mm. So if you're a good looking guy, that brings a totally different type of judgment where people might dismiss you of like, oh, well, of course life's easy for you, whatever, right? Right. Versus the other side of the coin, oh, you look like this, look at this tatted up guy, you know, like this look guy's at this not a realtor. realtor. Look at this idiot. Yeah, like <laughs> this guy don't know anything. Like they're oh, always going to cast judgment one way or the other. Which is also why video is amazing. Like let's, that's another point for like YouTube and social media. Yeah. When I like last year alone, man, we had 140 separate transactions that came through our YouTube channel. That was just That's through crazy. YouTube, not referral based, not anything. Just and you're organic. tracking it from a link that we your track YouTube? everything 100 yeah. percent because everything co comes through through our call system and all of that good stuff. So we can track it all the way through to closing. But what's amazing, man, is like when people can feel your intent and and they have an opportunity to know, like, and trust you through video. They're making the decision to reach out to you. The type of client you get from YouTube, man, it's amazing because they've watched you, they've serial watched you, they've appreciated and respected your content, and they've made a decision to contact you. Yeah. I'm not going to not be for them. They're choosing to contact us, right? And like, I'm just a big teddy bear. Like it has, it's it's not all oh, special operations or police or infantry. You're like, it's none of that. It's like, oh, Will's a big teddy bear. Yeah. And they're making that choice to commit, right? And that's amazing versus like no disrespect when how you win but like let's talk about leads real yeah. quick right like when you're when you're doing that game yep. it's almost like a blind date every time you show up it's almost like you got to have you're buying ass. like leads on Zillow or something correct yeah and it's a blind date and you got to kind of well that throw, goes back you know? that goes back to what I said earlier about yo if you're not built like using um, a lead source that also builds brand value long term yeah it, it's always transactional it's like well if I stop paying Zillow I stop making money and this is what I've always told all the digital marketers. I've had many digital marketers on this show and probably going to have less of them because it's like always the same story. Just like I don't have a ton of real estate guys anymore because it's like, yeah, you flipped a house. Like I know yeah, like yeah. It, it, it's a thing. Yep. Um, but, you know, the thing is, like with them, I they, they got started just doing paid ads and traffic and they've made millions of dollars doing it. But guess what? They never built any brand value along the way. And right. so what happens is the moment, you know, Facebook wants to change the algorithm or whatever, it's done, right? Versus, you know, for me, yeah, I, I have to constantly create content because you you do become irrelevant if you stop. So it's like, you know, you got to pick what you want to do. But with all of our marketing and content and everything else, there's long-term value. And those those videos are evergreen, just like yep. your videos. They're going to always produce leads. Dude, we, people literally tell us the first video they watched. Yep. Right? We can even see, like, where things come from. Like, dude, some of our videos from two years ago are still the best because the title is still relevant for what people are searching on YouTube. And it's evergreen. If I go make a, you know, a video on Instagram... After a couple of days, it's not being seen as much, right? Same thing with Facebook. Yep. So not that, and that's why we got to be uber consistent with it. And there's still some consistencies we have on YouTube. It's, it's, there's a huge consistency with that, but the power is like that evergreen, man. And it's awesome. But the, the bigger picture too, right? Is like, you got a family. Yeah. COVID happens like, Hey, whatever it takes, how do I have to pivot? How do, how, how do I have to like figure out where that, that shift is in order to like win? Yeah. Period. Right. And like something that comes from like a mil my military background or police background and just being involved in certain circumstances. Failure is so romanticized. Mm. Right. Like we should just be falling in love with failure. And I, I, I get like a little I'm even like crossing my legs right now. There we go. I don't know if this You're is mirroring sophisticated me. You're or, mirroring. or maybe I'm just uncomfortable talking about failure because it's like, OK, but my thought and I'm curious about your thoughts as well. I see way more quitting than failure, but it's wrapped up in the word failure. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. And it's like, we're encouraging everyone to fail in this and, that, and it's like, Hey man, failure should be an accomplishment. 
failure should be a bruise of like physical, mental, and just talent capacity at its max to where something unpredictable happens, which now forces you to stretch your capacity for more and then adapt. If we were talking like, man, just to be a little cliche about it, if we were talking about fighting, right? There's a difference between you getting knocked out and you tapping out. Yep. Knocked out. Hey, something unpredictable. Didn't see it coming. You get hit lights out fights over, right? Or the guy's going to kill you. Correct. Right. Versus you're fatigued. Something hurts. They get you in a hold and then you decide to tap. Right. Right. And like I see a lot of people in our space, men of entrepreneurship, they're not putting a certain level of effort into it. They're not really bruising their capacity for more and finding failure, achieving failure by, by maxing out. They're half-assed. They're one foot in, they're one foot out and they're quitting. Yeah. But we get to call it this word failure. Mm. And it's like, man, I don't, I don't think we're talking about yeah, the same thing. Yeah. You're not failing. You just never tried. You have to try to fail. And when Garrett, like, for example, Gary Vee, I like that guy, big fan. When he talks about how so in love he is with failure, a lot of people don't understand that. I think I understand it because I think I, the way that failure is framed in my mind, I think is very similar. Mm -hmm. If I'm failing at something, it's because I'm, hey, we're now ready for that next level. I'm now doing everything adequately to the point where I'm pushing myself outside of a comfort zone yeah. to the point to where like something failed because I just wasn't prepared yeah. to handle that workload or that capacity of something. And now I've got to become better in order to do so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's funny, man, with failure. Um, I always use the baseball analogy as you know, Hey, you fail seven out of 10 times. You're legit, right? You bat 300. Yeah. You're legit in your career. You're Tony Gwynn, bro. You're a hall yeah. of famer. Yeah. yeah. So I've always like embraced failure from baseball, just knowing like this is part of the game, you know, and as we got into business, I realized like, hey, you know, if we're going to go make offers, low ball offers as a house slipper, 99% are going to fail, right? But right. the 1% is going to work and we're going to make a lot of money doing that. I know that uh, as, as I make more videos, I'm going to have a lot that flop, but guess what? I'm going to have a lot that win. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about that a little bit, right? Like, hey, we, we failed seven out of 10 times. Like, I don't think you did. Yeah. People just said no. The failure is you not going out and making all of those calls and all of those offers. Yeah. You offered 10 out of 10 times. And yeah. You got three out of 10. Becoming better with your offer. Figuring out ways to get more conversion yeah. out of every offer that you submit. That That's just part of the game. I don't think that's actually failure. I think the failure is like just not doing it all, which again, is it's the f quitting. Yeah. It's the I can't catch a break kind of shit. Why do people quit? Man, I talk about this with my my business partner Eli, and he's got a good. So I, want, I don't want to I don't want to steal his mindset. I I think it's an accurate. Just steal one. it, dude. Just don't even steal We'll edit him shit. out, and we'll just. He's good be looking. Like, he's Jewish. You guys will figure out who he is. Yeah, this is Will's <laughs> idea. When it comes to like failing, like we, everyone talks about the fear of like failure. Eli's like, man, I don't think so because we've had a lot of people come through, man. We've got we're we're getting to a couple hundred realtors now, and we're having a lot of success. Cool. I've seen a lot of things through my background. He's seen some things through entrepreneurship. And every time we actually get around close proximity to people and we have this, this conversation about failure, whatever it may be, it doesn't seem like it's fear, bro. It seems like it's exposure to the actual level of work mm. and they just don't, they're just not in it, man. They're just right. not in it for the level of work that's, that's required. No different than physical fitness, man. Well, like if you want to achieve a certain I'll, level I'll take of that. it, I'll take it a step further. So, right. They... They want to do something, right? They're mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to make a million dollars in a year. That sounds great, right? And you're like, cool. Here's what you have to do, right? Take my course, right? And they look at all the curriculum and the material, and they're like, yeah, I don't want to do all that if that's what it takes to make a million dollars. They compromise. Right? Well, and so they end up settling or, or whatever the case is, right? But to take it a step further, it's like, well, why is it not enough, Right. Well, it all comes back down to purpose because mm. their purpose to make a million did not exceed the cost of what it was going to be. And so I have this concept of like, hey, if, you're, if your purpose doesn't exceed, exceed the cost, you're not going to do it. That's just, that's the formula, yeah. right? You will achieve as much as your purpose allows you to achieve. That's the amount of work you are willing to put in. And so people usually walk around with very little purpose. And so they do the bare minimum right? They do enough to get by. That's why everyone lives paycheck to paycheck. Right. It's not because they lack skills. It's not because I think they're lazy. It's because I think they lack purpose. Because if 
I told you, not you, because you're a high performer, but if I told somebody, I go, hey guys, this has nothing to do with money, but if you don't figure out how to make somebody who's making $5,000, if you don't figure out how to make $10,000 this month, I'm going to kill your kid. You would figure out how to make $10,000. Yeah. Right? It 100%. had nothing to do with about the money. It was the purpose of like, if I don't do this, yeah. this will happen. I need to do it. Curious question for you, right? Like, because I'm sure money hasn't been a problem for you in a while. And even like where I'm at, I haven't needed money yeah. in, a, in a long time. But like, what, what still like... What still serves you as far as like your, your ambition, your purpose with what you want to accomplish? What still and, serves and, you? Yeah. And that's the point, right? That I'm yeah. making is like, I will go as far as my purpose allows me to go because right. the moment that my purpose is, you know, either done, fulfilled, or it's too small, I will stop working because there's no point. I don't need money. Right. Like I'll stop. So you start realizing like, okay, my purpose has to be a lot bigger. Okay. So for me at this point, when I first started, and it's okay for your purpose to change, but when I first started, my purpose was, hey, I want to help people get into real estate investing. Like, right. there's too many people struggling. Let me go help them. And if I help people, I'm going to make money. They will happen. And so I did that. And as time has gone on, uh, my social media influence grew a lot bigger than I thought, um, than, like, and it grew a lot faster. And you and I talked about this um, you know, pre-show. You were like, hey, dude, I really like that you're starting to share your faith more. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, because at the end of the day, that's my true purpose. It's like, I want to help, you know, obviously like I'm serving God. That's, that's my number one purpose in life. And he's just given me a toolkit, um, on earth to go do that. Right. And so I feel like if I don't use the toolkit, AKA the natural abilities and talents and the circumstances he's put me in, I am a failure. I am being disobedient and I'm not living my purpose. Right. It has nothing to do with money. It's interesting, like you say that, because I, I bought my my first Bible, right? There we go. A couple of weeks ago. But what's interesting is, like, I bought my first Bible through watching a uh, a fellow Marine on the Sean Ryan podcast, and just okay. kind of hearing this story, and like, man, like, I just maybe I could, I could dive more into that. And then, like, that same week, the opportunity for your show popped up. Uh huh. And it was like interesting. Like, I've been watching you for a long time. Yeah. You know, like fan, and like especially if, like from the father side and different stuff, and like something I've really grasped from like. Just like a bit like that faithful side and giving yourself permission to win at a certain level. Right. Cause depending on how you grow up, if you don't grow up around money and different things, you might have thoughts of money. You might have stigmas of money and yeah. everybody that makes money is an asshole or like whatever, whatever narrative you've been told. I really had to give myself permission to just realize I'm still a good dude while accomplishing some things. And like, that was actually harder for me than, than maybe most might, might think. But what I, what I really started grasping was like when, if God gives you a gift for impact, like whatever your gift is, but if you're, if one of your gifts that he gives is influence and impact, you're going to become successful because of it. But the gift is supposed to go through you, not yep. to you. Mm. So you need to give yeah. influence and impact to others in order for God to touch many. Yeah, It's going to come through you. Mm -hmm. But along the way, because it's going through you, you're going to have some successes. You're going to have some financial success. You might have a fun car. You might have a big house, like whatever you choose to do with it. But you just need to understand that gift is, is intended to go through you. Yeah. Not just to you for to keep to yourself. And like, once I really started just reading more in the mornings and just really getting a better grasp on not so much what everyone else would tell me, but like, because everyone will tell you it's okay. If they're your friend, oh, it's okay. And yeah. No, man, just, I need to feel a certain way. But like the more I started realizing the byproduct of having impact and influence and the byproduct of helping others is a certain level of financial success, a certain level of wealth, a certain level of, of lifestyle. It's indirectly causing that because of how many other people you're helping. And as long as your cause and your intent and integrity behind what you're doing is is in line with your faith and, and why you're, you're set out to do it, I feel better about that. So I'm focused on how I feel about my level of impact and where the integrity comes from with my impact versus being concerned about how much impact I have. It's like, I need to make sure that the type and integrity of impact I have with everyone is still in line with my faith mm -hmm. and what I can speak to and what I'm good at. But it's through you, man. It's yeah. not like, yeah, here you go. God loves you. Why doesn't he love everybody else? I don't know. It's I don't know. You're right. That would be fucking weird, right? If he was just blessing me. Yeah. But I think 
the message that goes through you that then helps everybody. Yeah, the byproduct is you're able to financially put yourself into a certain position, but it's what you're doing with that gift. Yeah. Makes sense? I don't know yeah, if I'm no, saying 100%. that the right way. Yeah, I mean, the Bible talks about spiritual gifts and how, you know, we're all put on earth to basically be a part of the body and do whatever it is we are called to do it to function in the body. So it's like some people are meant to do this. Some people are meant to be pastors. Some people are meant to be missionaries. Some people are meant to be, you know, in the workspace. Some people yeah. are meant to finance the churches. Like, so mm-hmm. everyone has a specific role. And so for me to go bring it all full circle into purpose, it's like, I think God has put me through many different things in my life, whether it was pro baseball, whether it was grinding and building my business and to, you know, having influence things now to basically lead me to whatever the next call it is in my life. And so at this point with everything I've done, it's like, I think um, I'm feeling called to speak more about it, not just about business and everything else, but about faith. Because as I looked at the landscape of just this social media game, I started to look at like, okay, as a Christian, what other Christian entrepreneurs are really out there on social media, like that are big, that are talking about this. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized I was like, well, for one, most of the big entrepreneurs on social media aren't Christian at all. Mm -hmm. Like they they have totally different beliefs. Um, So they're not looking to them. Right. Right. I've met lots of bit or lots of amazing Christian business people, but they have no influence. Right. And so I started to think about it. I was like, man, you have an the, opportunity. Well, I was like, who's the guy? And I was like, I might be the guy. And so if that's the thing, then it's an enormous responsibility now, not only with how I want to position my content and everything else, but now I have to be held to a much higher standard. And I have to really think about the things I say, the things I do, because, you know, the Bible talks about leaders are held to a totally different standard than others. Correct. You know, so it's like, man, things that I thought it might be okay, probably aren't okay, even though they're not like big deals for most. It gives you something to look more into. And like yeah. for you, you love the challenge. So as you're recognizing more of that in yourself, there's also just this level of tightening the bolts and stepping up to that next level of challenge. And like, but just from my lens, looking at you, right? Like as much as you're seeing it as a responsibility, you might not realize how much permission you're giving others mm. to walk that line as well. Mm. right like so for example like my tattoos i'm a bigger guy i'm tattooed and it's like yeah, yeah you're realistic. And it's like and you know i got questions on the hands and i've got i've got we'll have to explain the hands later there there's <laughs> like personal stories behind them but the number one reason like with with the tats i've got my kids on me i've got everything means something on these tats yeah right? probably mildly interesting to everyone else but for me special but the biggest point is permission yeah when you go when you tat your hands there's no hiding it Right? Right. So whether I'm in a suit or I'm in this polar hanging out with you, I get to authentically be myself no matter what lane of professionalism I'm in. But the biggest thing is it just gives me permission to be myself. And if this yep. is the creative I want on me, but it's also regardless of whether you want a tattoo or not, it's me authentically being me. Yeah. Right. And you're going to attract people integrity. who are well, it gives like people permission to be themselves. Yeah. Right. Like, so as you step into your faith, you know, like huge responsibility. Yeah. Really cool, though, how it just gives permission and confidence to guys like myself that are also starting to speak more to that. I love it. That's huge, man. I love it. Random question before we get to the end here. Do you, so like we have um, a girl, Felicia Rexford. She's been on the podcast. She was in the military for many years, and she's a seven-figure realtor as well. Nice. And um, local here, part of our community. And uh, her her main business is military folks, mm. right? So she is like literally the go to source for super cool everyone at Nellis out here and and all that. So do you get a lot of military people? I don't. <laughs> I don't. You know, like because um, your content's not geared towards that. It's not. You know, and it's not because I don't love my veteran community, right? Like it just comes down to just being a value add to as many people as you can and letting that grow. And, and man, I love I love my veterans. Why I love doing this podcast, why I love the guy that I do business with, Eli, why I love my coach, Justin. I've got a buddy here with me, Brett. Love this guy. Like the best blessing I've had transitioning into like out of military, out of police, and then transitioning into like the entrepreneur world and just being around civilians is just having the opportunity to not only just be appreciative of how badass guys that just happen to not serve are because yeah. in the military, man, you, you start hearing about this, the special operations guys and the dev guys, like, 
it's badass. No question about it. But we tend to like get very one dimensional and think that that's now the standard or the only lane that's badass. Yeah. There are so many other proficient high producers that are, that just decided to take a different path outside of the military. I'm so glad that I get to be around them. And the other side of that coin is with our YouTube channel, with the networks we've created, with our sphere of influence of, of business that comes in. Do you know who really loves veterans, man? Not just like other veterans. Do you know who really loves veterans? Who? Civilians. Yeah. Do you know how much thanks and appreciation that just working people, just good people that are choosing you as their realtor? Yeah. Uh, lean on you for leadership. Listen to you when you're giving advice or guidance and just really appreciate the dedication and, and level of professionalism you're giving them as a service. They love you for it. You know, yeah. like that's something that might have been unexpected, but just meeting civilian badasses like yourself, mm -hmm. being able to collaborate and work with other people. And I think that part of my mission isn't just to romanticize the the already romantic military side of, of cool shit. Yeah. It's realizing how much, like, if it's almost like my voice should be more toward veterans, getting them to be open minded with entrepreneurship and realizing how much they actually can step out of the veteran community to really create a new mission for themselves. Mm -hmm. They can still have a ton of camaraderie and loyalty like they did in the military. You can still have that with civilians and how big they can become, how much they can accomplish outside of the military world, right? And like a lot of times, man, when we come out, we don't have a mission yet. Yeah. And it's hard and you're going through some stuff with your mind or whatever it may be. And like, there's a lot of people that I think work with veterans and that support that. I think part of my voice is encouraging veterans to really take that leap of faith and venture out back into the community and realizing how many good people they can find themselves around that also have a different skill set than you do. That definitely correlates to you yeah. being more successful than you would have been if you were just around a bunch of dudes that were like you. Yeah. I don't need more wills yeah. in my business, bro. It'd yeah. be a lot of fun. We don't we need make a lot of meatheads. We're good. No, yeah. We're good. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Well, bro, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. It's been a lot of fun. Pleasure. It, it's, it's, it's inspiring. Um, we're going to link to the new course down below in the description. 100%. And uh, make sure you guys go follow Will. If you're looking to buy in Denver, you if you're know, looking to you buy in Denver, to hit us up. If you're looking for that YouTube course, it's it's special just to release yeah. on this show. So if you're looking for that, go find that, grab it. We're doing coaching with that course. So yeah. you're going to have bi-weekly Q&As that run live for anybody that's a part of that course, that purchased that course. If you're looking for actual elite coaching, hit me up on a DM for that. Like if you're actually going to talk to me when it yeah. comes to that stuff. So we're encouraged for that. But such a pleasure. I'm such a fan of who you are as a father and, and your faith, man. It's been, um, this is what I've been geeking out for, for a little yeah. while, man. So I, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate that. All right, guys. Well, that wraps it up. Make sure you check out the next episode and we'll see you guys later. Peace.